all and welcome. My name is Margaret. I'm a historical costumer and textile conservator in training. And today is the first official video of making my 1860s changeable gown. Now, if you didn't see my designing video from about two weeks ago, you can click up here or down in the description to watch that. That sort of gives you an introduction of the project. And if you would like to see me make all of the underpinnings, you can of course go to my sewing adventures playlist, which again will be linked here or here to watch those videos as well. So just to give you a little introduction, this is an 1860s changeable gown from the dates about 1865 to 1868, and today we will be making the skirt portion. We will not be trimming the skirt in this video, purely because the trim that I had ordered has not come yet, and it should be here by the start of July, but I wanted to get this video out to you before then. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, of course, the first thing is to cut out the skirt. I'm uh, using Truly Victorian's 247 pattern for their 1865 elliptical skirt, which fits over their elliptical cage current run pattern. You will see that I very much enjoyed working this pattern, and I, I really do like Truly Victorian's. For this project, I'm cutting this out of a 100% self taffeta, which honestly cuts a lot like wrapping paper. You can just kind of glide the scissors through it. The reason I'm using this particular fabric is, one, it's pretty historically accurate. I've worked with a lot of silk taffeta gowns from this period, but also it was uh, $6 a yard, which was an absolutely wonderful price. I had to pick some of it up, and I bought way too much of it. I then flatlined all the pieces with this cotton fabric. This is something I actually found secondhand. It's just like a stiff cotton um, that's actually used for lining draperies, but it worked very, very well for this project just to give it a little bit more volume and a little bit more structure. I have seen 1860s skirts without flat lining, but as we discussed in the previous designing the dress video, I, I do really like that more structured skirt. I also wanted to add a pocket into my skirt because that is, uh, you know, historically accurate. There are quite a few 19th century skirts that have pockets in them. If you want to learn more about that, I have an entire video about the history of the pocket, which I will link. But I just quickly drafted a pocket, really, quite poorly, but also it works, so it's fine, just by tracing around my hand. It's quite spacious in there, which is really nice. I just did that out of the same cotton that I used for the inner lining. Then I took the pieces of the skirt and just sewed up all those long seams on my sewing machine. The sewing machine in this period is historically accurate. Um, the sewing machine, of course, was invented in the late 18th century. But we didn't really get a working sewing machine until the early 19th century and then by the mid 19th century it was starting to become available to consumers so the 1860s is really when you start seeing machine sewn gowns also i would like to finish a project uh you know this summer and not next year so that's also why i made that decision i used a cut and thread for this project that matches the fashion fabric. And the opening for this skirt is at the center back, which is not super historically accurate, but also totally fine. I don't really care that much. I then inserted the pocket bag and um, completely did it wrong. It's not right. So I had to rip it out and do it again. It's fine, it turned out fine in the end. So as you can see here, I've got the skirt all done up, all the side seams are done up, and it is on the mannequin. And now we just kind of have to pleat it to fit and then deal with the hem. So I honestly think this is going pretty well. It hasn't taken so long so far, but we're gonna take you over here. As you can see, we've got a lot of extra bits over here. This pattern, the Truly Victorian pattern, wants me to like pleat it, but I'm gonna kind of monkey with it and see what works best. I did end up taking small pleats at each of the seams. This did not distract from the flatness of the front of the gown like I thought it would, so it actually turned out quite nicely. And it also helped to hide the gaping of the pocket at that uh, sort of front side seam. I should have put it at the true side seam, but you know, you live and you learn. And of course, I gathered down those cartridge pleats as you see in this TikTok because I totally forgot to film it for YouTube. I then flatlined the waistband and sewed it together on the long edges, turned that bugger right side out, and then I pinned it to the skirt 
and I just whip stitch that into place, making sure to catch all of those individual cartridge pleats for maximum security. And then I added just some hook and eyes at the center back to close. Next, I finished off the pocket. I just added a piece of ribbon from the sort of corner of the pocket to the center of the waistband. This is so that when the pocket is full, it is supported by the waistband as well, so that we don't get any weird sagging or rumply bumplies around the pocket and the skirt stays nice and in shape. Okay, so I finished the main construction of the skirt now, as you can see, I've got it here on the mannequin over the cage crinoline and the petty, and I think it is looking great. The structure is super great. Uh, like the intern, it's very structured with that flat lining. It's just brilliant. That's how I wanted it to be. And then the pleats look great. The waistband's sitting perfectly. And now we just have to deal with this hem situation. And the hem is actually at a pretty good length right now, but I do need to do some evening out. You can kind of see that the flat lining is peeking out and it's like not super even. So I'm just gonna like really try to even it up and then not try to cut off any length whatsoever. And then I have, I can show you, I have this um, sort of polished cotton, which I'm gonna put around the the base of it, so like right there, um, as we looked at in the original in the last video. Just stitch that in and then like literally finish the hem off with wool binding tape. Like that's, that's it, that's the skirt. Um, and then of course there's gonna be a ruffle, which I'm gonna be honest with you guys, ruffles are not my favorite thing to do because they take forever and they're superfluous. Um, but it, it's gonna look better, I think, with the ruffle. Like, the entire costume is just gonna be more balanced with the ruffle. Granted, with saying that, I don't have my trim in yet. It hasn't shipped from Etsy. Um, so it's very possible that that won't be in for months. So this project might not be done for a while, but I will, of course, show you it um, and I'm gonna probably be getting some photos of this in August hopefully. I did end up evening out the hem as you can see here and I tried to make sure that I was not taking off any more fabric than I needed to because this skirt ended up being like a, t a tad bit short but like, like a quarter of an inch short so I'm just gonna let it go. And then I took my glazed cotton which was already in a strip, but I um, evened it out a bit, made sure it was all one uniform width, and sewed it all together so I had one long piece. And then I pinked the top edge, as you could see in that original in the designing video, it had just a pinked edge, so I did the same thing. And then I pinned it onto the skirt, making sure to take little pleats in the top of the facing uh, just to ease it into the skirt shape. And then to keep that in place I just use long running stitches that just went through the flat lining layer and not can't be seen on the outside. So that worked really well. And then to just finish it all off I machine sewed the wool hem tape which is about three quarters of an inch on just with the machine stone lock stitch um, and this finished off the hem. This is actually very historically accurate, sort of the preeminent historically accurate hem method for this period. All of the dresses that I've seen from this period do have this particular hemming technique. So it was really fast and easy and works great. We'll definitely be doing it again. And with that, the skirt was finished. <laughs>
So thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. This is the start of something good. Um, so you can see this project is huge. Um, it's really easy to walk in because of the crinoline, but because I flatlined the skirt with that sort of drapery backing cotton, it's very robust and it has a life of its own, let me tell you. Um, super comfy, definitely, definitely would recommend this pattern from Julie Victorian. Again, they knocked it out of the park. It fits perfectly over their cage crinoline. Um, so yeah, would definitely recommend the pattern. Off camera, um, and I may have mentioned this already, I did make a petticoat just to make sure that you can't see the ribs of the boning on the outside of my skirt, which you you can't. Even if I don't have a petty, you really can't. But I did make uh, what I like to call a quote unquote down a dirty petticoat. It's just, it's, it's not historically accurate at all. Uh, there's like a section of ruffle where there's no ruffle because I just couldn't bother after like three hours of ironing that thing. I was like, no, we're good. We don't. We don't need that extra, like, six inches of ruffle. It's fine. Um, I really like using the wool hem tape. That is the historical way to do that. That's how all the historical examples I've seen have had the wool hem tape, and it works really wonderfully. I didn't even have to, like, level out the hem on this thing. It was, like, the perfect length. I'm really glad I didn't uh, actually, <laughs> like, cut anything down. It's absolutely perfect length. Um, I also really liked putting this uh, glazed cotton um, just to give the hem a little bit more structural stability. Because you have the hoop, you really don't need that as much as you would in, say, a late 19th century skirt. So all in all, really enjoyed making this skirt. Um, really enjoy wearing this skirt. It is very difficult to wear this around my apartment. I literally have the space which I shot this in is like the only space in my apartment that this thing fits in. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I intend to take this on an airplane in August. So we'll see how that goes. Not wear it on the airplane, but you know, ship it out to home so I can get some really good photos of it. So I hope that you stick around for the other videos in the series. I'll definitely have one making both the bodices and then I'll have another one making the belt and trimming the entire ensemble. So if you want to be notified when those come out, you can of course hit the subscribe button down below. Otherwise, you can go over to Instagram where I'm at Costume and Conservation and you can follow me on there too to get some more sort of real-time updates on this process. I also do that over on my TikTok at Costume and Conservation. So if you're interested in either of those things, you can head over there. Otherwise, I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye!